This podcast is intended for listeners over the age of 19 in Ontario, and we ask that you respect your local laws regarding cannabis. Be sure to like, uh, download, follow, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Hi, ladies. Hi, ladies. Hi, Annie. Hi, Amanda. And hello to Andrew. Hi, ladies. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. I love that. We have Andrew from Nature Lion in the hot box virtually today. Um, and we're going to chat about growing your own edible mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with the psychedelic kind. Which are wonderful and fabulous on their own, but that is not what today's episode is about. We are talking about growing your own food. That's um, right. And we love Andrew because he hits all of our boxes yeah, I'd like to add you can you can be a fun guy without psychedelics. So. <laughs> <laughs> a dad joke if I've ever heard one. I love it. Oh my god! I, well, I got it. lots of mushroom jokes, so you know some of them are a little corny, but uh, okay. love they're, they're they're there. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you just jump in, Andrew, for our listeners who don't know what Nature Lion is and what growing your own mushrooms at home is all about. Can you just tell us a little bit of your history and how you got to where you are now? Because it sounds like just two years ago, your life was a lot different. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, the, the basic story, while I'm sure a lot of people have similar stories um, being affected by COVID um, with their jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was working in the film industry for the last 10 years in Toronto, and uh, it's a bit of a hectic lifestyle, long hours, and uh, and it's hard work. Sure is, um, yeah. Then COVID kind of hit, and all of a sudden we were all told to go home, and we we're out of work. And I mean, it happened for multiple industries, but the film industry was particularly hard hit. Yeah. Being as a lot of our clients are from the state. So mm-hmm. everybody went home and, you know, stayed safe. So there was a long period of that, probably six, eight months of, of downtime. Yeah. So in that time, um, I started toying with uh, growing mushrooms. And I, I was researching as much as I could online, figuring out everything I could uh, to get it going at home in my basement. And um, I was super nervous. I, I, I probably didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But I approached a local farmer's market in Hamilton. And uh, it's the Ottawa Street Farmer's Market. And we're still there every Saturday all summer long. Cool. Um, it's a great time. But uh, when I approached them, I was so nervous. And I didn't really know. I heard that farmer's markets were like a scary uh, thing because they didn't accept a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So I went up there and I asked the market manager, I approached her, I said, hey, I'm, I'm growing mushrooms in my basement <laughs> and I'd like to set up a booth here. And she was very welcoming. So it was kind of, it wasn't the response I was expecting. And I think that's kind of just the local Hamilton scene in general. People are very friendly here. So yeah. she accepted me. She said, let's give it a shot. She was a little skeptical. She was kind of like, hey, are you sure you can grow enough mushrooms to, you know, to handle the market? And, yeah. You know, I was confident. I said, absolutely, even though I didn't know. If I could. <laughs> <We'll figure laughs> right? <that> so, <clears throat> but, you know, you got to get the ball rolling, right? Mm-hmm. So, Bake it till you make um, it. Yeah, so we had our first market day. You know, it was a, it was a month away. We grew as many mushrooms as, as we could. And that, and when I say we, that's me and, and my girlfriend, Nicole. She she helped me through a lot of this in the beginning. And she was right there by my side selling at the farmer's market. So, you know, we, we kind of both did our own things, but we had products on the table and we were there we had, and we had a great time. Um, so, you know, the first couple of weeks were a little slow. People were just kind of getting a feel for it, and and they didn't really know a lot about the mushrooms, I was finding. People would walk by, they would say, I don't like mushrooms, or I've never seen those, and I don't want to buy them, and that kind of thing. So I was getting a lot of mixed reviews. And then you'd get people that they drove from Toronto, like an hour and a half in traffic (laughs) to get there, to buy everything on the table, right? So you've got people that, uh, you know, are on the fence about mushrooms and you got people that are really, really for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was really nice to have that very welcoming uh, warmth with our customers early on. 
And um, <clears throat> from there, I really just wanted people to experience what I was experiencing by growing these at home and experimenting with different types of mushrooms and, and you know, seeing how they grow and, and what they look like because it, it's really fascinating. So I got the idea, and it's I'm not the first person to come up with this idea, but I got the idea to put out a grow kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we made grow kits. The first one was black oyster mushroom. That's what I decided I was going to go with. Yeah. And because I wasn't too sure whether it was going to take or not, we uh, started a Kickstarter. And from there, we were able to generate some sales, um, local people in the community, but all over Canada. Um, wow. But a lot of our support was from local Hamilton people that, you know, they saw us at the farmer's market. They were curious and we told them our story and they wanted to, you know, support that. So, um, so that was great. That's how we started. It was all on Kickstarter. And from there, we just started making mushroom kits. And, you know, at, at first I'll, I'll admit, I, I didn't know half of what I was getting into because <laughs> there's a lot to it. Like, um, you may think like, Oh, this is easy. I can start a mushroom business. And, and parts of it are very easy. But there are parts of it that are more complicated that you don't see behind the scenes where you're, you're really scratching your head. And a lot of it's not, um, there's no textbook saying, here's what you do. Mm -hmm, right. um, a lot of businesses are like that, obviously, right? But um, with mushroom growing, it's, it's relatively new. Um, commercial mushroom farming of like oyster mushrooms, that type of thing, they haven't been around for that long. So a lot of the techniques we use are things we dug up on a forum online and a guy tried it and he might have been growing psychedelics or oysters or whatever in, you know, in his house mm -hmm. and it worked for him. And we take that knowledge and apply it and, and experiment. And a lot of it spawned from there, just from reading, you know, um, communicating with the community and just figuring out what was working for people. And from there, the business has kind of just started snowballing. So people are really interested in the kits. They love to grow them at home. Um, kids love them. They're they're fascinating to watch because they're so fast. I think you guys have grown a few now. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. And I, I did want to say that I, I have never grown mushrooms before, and we are a mushroom family. Uh, my husband will eat every kind of mushroom he can find. He's really taken up the idea of foraging, and he's been foraging a lot the last year, and he's got all the books, and he's right into it. So we're not mm -hmm. scared of mushrooms. So we grew them. The kids had so much fun watching them, and you literally can watch them grow. It's so yeah. quick. So fast. And uh, the black oyster, the uh, such a big, beautiful cluster, and we fried it up with some garlic and butter, and the texture and the taste is so hearty. And like any, I love growing food as it is, but to eat something that you watch grow, mm -hmm. and it was so simple. Spray it a few times a day. You don't even need to have direct sunlight. You don't want direct sunlight. So that was simple. And I thought, oh, boo, I'm done my, my kit. Ugh. I actually managed to get just recently a full second, what would you call it, a bloom, a cluster uh, it's uh, well, we we call it like a flush. So a it's flush. It, it, so it's second. a flush of mushrooms. You're getting your you know your first flush, and then your second flush, and yeah. then sometimes you can even get a third flush. I'm gonna Ooh. try, Andrew. I am gonna try. Um, but I didn't even take into account the the joy and the conversations that would bring up with my children. Right. And that was really fun. That it was a, something we could all do as a family. Now they didn't eat them because they're boring and they're children. But that was more for mommy and daddy. Um, but that made us think about, you, you've given us a few kits. So we thought, how can we share this love? Yeah, and we, we ferried it on over to our local elementary school where our kids uh, our kids go to school to the same school. So we gave it to the yeah. kindergarten program over there. Yep. And they're having an absolute ball watching those things grow. Yeah, and you think kids that are exposed to it that young aren't going to be have the problem that Andrew was talking about before. Right is I think a lot of people's fear about mushrooms is misinformation, or mm -hmm. I'm going to die, I'm going to get high, mm -hmm. and that they're funny looking. Yeah, and that they taste funny. They don't taste funny, they taste delicious. That's right, but they because they look funny, like my brain would tell me that that tastes funny, mm -hmm. right? So and what it is, I think, for most people, it's a texture thing. Um, 
Uh, that's just from my general being at the farmer's market and talking to people, you mm-hmm. know, the people that don't like mushrooms, I like to ask questions. Why don't you like mushrooms? Mm-hmm. Right? You know, how did your mother make them when you were a kid? <laughs> yeah, out of the um, can. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with mushrooms, yeah, either, you know, they're out of a can or um, I, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not, but uh, 98% of the mushrooms grown in Canada are those white button mushrooms yeah, yeah. or cremini or um, a variation of cremini, which is just an older version of it, um, the portobello. Mm. So those are actually the same mushroom, one's just younger than the other. Oh, so, look at that. Um, I yeah, know that. those mushrooms, well, they make up 90%, 98% of the market. So if you're telling me that you don't like mushrooms, it's probably because you've had those ones. Mm-hmm. And not to say anything bad about them because they can be prepared and made to taste great. Um, but a lot of the techniques with uh, cooking mushrooms, the, there's some to be desired still there. Yeah. Um, people aren't up to speed on, on necessarily how to prepare them properly Mm -hmm. and the thing about mushrooms is you want to almost it seems like you're overcooking them but you want them to be like crispy on the outside yes and that way when you bite into it you're not getting that mushy soggy texture which i think is like a lot of people get that you know when you order maybe like take out Chinese mm-hmm. food and mm-hmm. they have those mushrooms yes. in there. They're like boiled. Yes. yes. Yeah. Like that. Like, I think a lot of people are, are thinking of that mm-hmm. and they're not really taking into consideration that every different mushroom has a different texture and a different taste. So from foraging mushrooms in the woods, there's a, a really unique mushroom called chicken of the woods. Yes. Yes. And it's bright orange and kind of, it looks like candy corn almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has a very interesting texture and it, it's, it's eerie when you bite into it. If, you, if you're a meat eater, like I'm a meat eater and this was on my plate, I prepared it just like I would have chicken. Yep. We, you know, smothered it in barbecue sauce and uh, we, we put it on the barbecue and we, and we grilled it and after cutting into it and eating it, I couldn't really tell the difference. Oh, and the wow. taste wasn't exactly the same as chicken, but the texture was the same. And that it was right. so strange, like it, like just to bite into it for the first time. But it was a really uh, good experience, I think. And I think that all the other mushrooms out there, too, they make great you know, substitutes for, for meat as well. Well, that's so, what I thought of the black oyster. Like it had a real steaky, um, nice texture that Mm -hmm. gave my body my mind the idea of steak and if you are trying to move towards a more plant-based balance uh diet that's a great way to to not feel like you're going without which leads us into our next question why should people eat mushrooms what are what are the benefits to eating mushrooms right so um well with that being said the benefit is obviously there for um, you know, people who are concerned about the environment or, you know, the treatment of animals and stuff, because those meat textures, um, you know, that's like the future of food right now is, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're growing meat in labs yeah. and, you know, trying to get away from that whole animal farming side of things. And I think mushrooms has the potential to take over a large portion of that as well. Um, especially with these very unique textures and tastes and their ability to absorb flavors that, you know, you're cooking with. So you can really do a lot of different things with them. Um, Also, they have a lot of protein uh, and nutrient content. Um, They're high in antioxidants, which everybody knows is is good. Um, But I think overall, there's there's still more to be discovered with mushrooms and what they can actually do for us, because the research is still young on a lot of these mushrooms. But um, lion's mane, for example, it's an edible mushroom. It uh, we sell the grow kit that you can grow it at home, but it's native to North America. It grows on hardwood trees. Um, It's a bit more of a rare mushroom to find actually out in the wild because it's Growing conditions can be kind of specific, and it's it's a bit finicky. Um, 
it's easier to grow kind of in the home than it is to find, right? So okay. um, that's why we went with that. But lion's mane is, there's a lot of studies relating to its effect on the nervous system mm -hmm. and how it affects your brain and mm -hmm. your memory. Um, so I, these are all great things. And uh, a lot of people are starting to take note of this. And I, I get a lot of people come into the farmer's market and they already know what lion's mane is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're, they're very interested in, in getting it in some form or another. So, you know, we have it in different forms. There's, there's extracts, you know, there's powdered, there's the fresh form, and then, you know, there's different dried and sliced forms as well. But it's one of those things that it's still kind of understudied and, um, you know, it, there there needs to be more looking into it for sure. Like there are mushrooms that have been around for 2000 years that for whatever reason, they're not doing clinical trials with like reishi mushrooms that has been used in Eastern medicine yeah, yeah. for 2000 years. Interesting. Right. For your immune system <clears throat> um, and vitality. Uh, they call it the fountain of youth mushroom. Yes, I've heard it referred to as that before. Mm -hmm. So, Andrew, just like I'm going off on off on a little tyrant here, but like, why yeah. do you think that they don't allow? Like, it's not like this is an illegal substance, right? Like within the cannabis yeah. space, we didn't test the efficacy of pregnancy and cannabis because it was illegal. But now mm -hmm. we can start to examine those things because of legalization. So why do you think our medical professionals who, you know, see what's happening in other nations and what they're doing through the use of mushrooms and not studying that a little closer to home? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's hard to say really what, you know, drives the medical uh, profession. Obviously, money, money is of, of a big concern <laughs> to all of them. So if you can't make money on it, then it's not really something, you know, and, and the thing about mushrooms is, is people have been using them for thousands of years. Yeah. And today is no different from then. So right. if in a primitive form, you can make an extract of any mushroom yeah. by taking a pot of water, adding the mushroom, simmering it for five to maybe even eight hours and just keeping that really low heat and maybe topping off the water here and there to, you know, so it doesn't all boil off, but mm -hmm. that will effectively pull the compounds from the mushroom and you can use that tea for your health. So mm -hmm. one um, mushroom that is common for tea that I like to use is the chaga mushroom. Yes. And it grows on birch trees, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's an immunomodulator. So it helps balance your immune system. So this is good for people with an overactive or an underactive immune system because it, it helps to keep it at an even keel. Yeah. And you can make a very simple extract by just simmering it in water and then drinking that tea. And it, the tea is actually good on its own. Mm -hmm. It may not be a taste for everybody, but it's not it's not mushroomy. No. It's more earthy kind of a, mm -hmm. like almost like a a regular uh, leaf leafy tea. Have and you tried you it, Amanda? I have not. Okay, well I should give you some some time. Um we mm -hmm. drink chaga tea here, my husband more so than myself, but it is so simple. We do it mm -hmm. in the slow cooker. Yep. Um for Yo, call, call me up to the house um, next time we're having... And you can get the, the, the Chega at your local health store. Mm, no big deal. Okay. It wasn't yeah, expensive. You can get it from us. Uh, oh, from well, us. Then that's where we should get it from. Um, at the farmer's market. Yeah. And I like, I'm a tea drinker, but I really like the taste of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not overwhelming. And if it is, just add some ice, put some honey in. And it's in yeah. your thing, and, right? Yeah, yeah, and it is a wonderful... And it's actually, yeah. I think, quite an easy mushroom to yeah. spot and find. It definitely. It well, it grows predominantly on birch trees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if it's not a birch tree, it's probably not chaga. <laughs> and it's it looks like almost very woody, but when you cut it open, it's like this golden brown, really nice color, really earthy color. And um, if you're if you're sick, throw a pot of chaga on the stove and drink the whole thing you'll be feeling better like within, you know, a day. Oh, wow. I, I find that it really helps me. Anytime I'm sick, I, I 
I dose up on my mushrooms for sure. Huh, that's interesting. Well, you know what? Mm-hmm. It was interesting to hear you speak about the lion's mane mushroom and its yeah. potential or its proven, I, I don't know which one it is, efficacy of like almost con- reconnecting neurons within the brain. Yeah, um, well, the studies are with mice. So right. a lot of the studies are, are regarding mice. But um, in this one study, they... They scraped a part of the the mouse's brain to simulate Alzheimer's uh, in a group of mice. Mm -hmm. And then they fed them lion's mane um, for several weeks. And the group of mice that they didn't feed lion's mane to, they weren't able to kind of remember the maze that they had to, you know, they were challenging them with this maze over and over. They weren't able to remember it. Um, Whereas the other group of mice... They weren't able to remember it at first, but because they were taking the lion's mane, they fared way better than the other group, and they started yeah. being able to remember the path and finish the maze. Yeah. So, and, and I think there, like there, there is some, like you're saying, some proven mice research that shows that. But I think there's enough anecdotal evidence out there mm-hmm. now, yeah, <laughs> to really support the claims that. Lion's mane mushrooms has a positive impact on the brain. Yes. And I think it's absolutely fascinating. Um, Mm -hmm. I have a family member who uh, suffered from a stroke earlier this year. And when I first thing I said when I heard about it, I was like, hey, you got to get in contact with Andrew over at Nature's (laughs) Lion or Nature Lion and you need to uh, get some some lion's mane. So I know that he ordered some from you up into the Ottawa area and Mm -hmm. uh, is you know, the progress report is like, holy crap, you were right. Mm -hmm. I should, I should have been, you know, eating these mushrooms for many years. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's an absolutely fascinating thing. And I think just similarly to the cannabis, like I think there's just like, as we all talk about mushrooms more, Mm -hmm. we will all start to consume them more. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like kale. Nobody ate kale 15 years ago. (laughs) Right. And now we're all, eating kale right? so easy to grow too yes now yeah. actually speaking of growing i did want to ask you told me something that was absolutely fascinating the last time we chatted about how here in ontario we live on i think you said the largest mycelium network well not ontario no the 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 planet the planet the, itself the, the entire planet is is covered in in my mycelium it's It's incredible because it's under, you know, under everywhere you walk, Mm -hmm. there's a network of, of this web of mycelium and it's, um, communicating and it it communicates with plants in nature and they're finding out that it actually, um, it was a recent, um, but there was a news article published that mushrooms have their own language and there's been scientists who have been measuring the, um, the vibrational tones that they're putting out and there's repeatable patterns. So they were able to determine that these mushrooms are actually talking to each other. And not only are they talking to each other, but they're helping facilitate uh, the movement of um, nutrients and things like water amongst the forest. So um, if a tree is sick, the trees are communicating via the mycelium Holy and they're shit. transferring. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really wild stuff, but they're transferring the nutrients and, and that information through this network, which is makes up of, of all sorts of different fungi, mm-hmm. but they manage to still get the message across. Right. So and there's thousands of different kinds of fungi, right? Right. Yeah. 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 That's so well, fascinating. when I was preparing for this episode, I was actually uh, sitting at my kitchen table and my son was watching the the new Magic School Bus. You remember the Magic School <laughs> Bus when we were kids? School. Oh, yeah. Well, they, yeah. they've redone it and there's an entire episode on the Mycelium Network. Oh, and I was awesome. Yeah, I was, I'll have to it, watch Andrew. that when I get home. <laughs> yeah, it, and I was so impressed the way that. We are now having these conversations with children at such a young age Mm -hmm. because after watching this as I'm preparing this, you know, for this episode, my son said to me, like, you know, that's kind of cool. So, mommy, is that why you don't pull your plants out of the ground? Right? Like something I did last year was I just took, I left all my root structures in the ground. 
so mm-hmm. they would break down. And I said, and I basically said, I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty much what we want to disrupt it as little as possible. And then it right. got into this huge conversation about how we shouldn't be ripping up the farmland to mm-hmm. build houses because we're disrupting the mycelium network. And he yeah. was like passionately upset. Like my little oh, five year old wow. was like yeah. really. Like I would use the word angry yeah. at the world yeah. around him because he just couldn't. And rightfully so. Right, exactly. Like, but he, yeah. he just couldn't comprehend that mm-hmm. we are actively trying to ruin this incredible system of communication and like sharing. That was what he said. But they're just sharing information, mommy. Aww, that's like, so mm-hmm. sweet. And, Aww, that's... <laughs> you know, well, I think there's it's there's hope because you know with you know. For for me, it, it spurred out of nowhere. Just hey, you know, it's time to help the mycelium network and grow mushrooms and and teach people to grow mushrooms. So we're hoping that we can we can spread that enough so that people like your son, like mm-hmm. people, you know, kids will be inspired by this and mm-hmm. to make a change. And even if it's just growing their own food, yeah. I um, I was growing all these oysters in my basement. And once you're done with the bags, you know, after you get two or three flushes from it, they're ready to go in the compost. So I started a big pile of compost in my backyard, uh, you know, to my girlfriend's dismay, of course, right? But <laughs> there, there is a giant pile of mushroom blocks in the backyard. They grew more mushrooms from these <laughs> blocks. Um, but there's a dead tree in my neighbor's yard. Yeah. And it's now started to grow oyster mushrooms. And I'm really quite amazed because the spores have spread from my compost pile oh, up into right. this dead tree. Oh, that's and so now cool. the circle of life is continuing, right? Oh, so, that is and so the tree cool. needs to be cut down, but the mushrooms will help that happen a lot will faster. Live on. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Bye. that. And you know, just Rewinding a bit, like mm-hmm. this company is two years old. You yep. said you started with a Kickstarter. It was a small Kickstarter. Now you've got a huge 3,000 square foot grow facility, I believe. A big yeah. space, and it's beautiful. Well, it's it's still too small now. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah, um, but so, uh, we're making it work, definitely. So. I saw your grow kits at Lowe's. So we love a, a story where... Awesome, and I bet you are so much happier than you were when you were in the film industry. Uh, actually, that's and what I wanted to ask him: is like, w- do you think you're going to go back into the film industry? Well, I, I'm trying everything I can not to, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, only to support his mushroom habit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like it, it, it's funny because uh, I was working on the series, uh, one of the Star Trek series that they shoot in Toronto. And I didn't know much about the show. I just kind of worked there, and I didn't really read the script. I know it's bad, but, you know, it wasn't part of my job requirement. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I didn't read the script, and I, and I don't really watch the show because I don't watch a lot of TV. Uh, one of my uh, graffiti artists, we had a, a graffiti contest here at the farm, yeah. and they were spray-painting mushrooms all over the walls. Mm-hmm. And the guy said to me, he says, this is really bizarre. He says, you're working on a show about mushrooms, and you're building a mushroom farm. I'm like, I'm working on a show about mushrooms? <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought I was working on a show about space. But um, apparently there's um, some concepts in the show that involve mycelium. And the um, it's it, it's used for power generation. I mean, yes. I know very, very <laughs> little about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm but, a Trekkie at heart, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. They, well, they reached out to Paul Stements. Um, because the writers didn't know anything about mushrooms. Yeah. And they, they contacted the mushroom expert, uh, the guy with the mushroom hat. And he, there's an, I was reading an article about it. He, because he's a big Trekkie as well, um, he gave them all this information for free and just like, you know, spent time consulting with them so that they could write these parts into the show. So a lot of it was actually inspired by him. That's so great. That's so yeah, great. which is yeah, really neat. Really not a lot of people know that, but yeah. To go back to your question, I would, I, I don't really see myself going back there because what I'm doing now is too inspiring yeah. to mm-hmm. move uh, away from. Yes, so, and to be spending, yeah, spending such love and and being able to teach and share that's so rewarding. Yeah, and you have kindly, uh, generously 
uh, offer to do a giveaway with our listeners That's and right. Instagram yeah. followers. And you're going to gift through a giveaway for... Four mm-hmm. kits. Yeah. So you got the the black oyster, mm-hmm. the pink oyster, the white oyster, and the lion's mane. Mm-hmm. So right. that means that we get four winners. Yes. Which, is, which is crazy awesome. And for those of you who don't win or you're not interested in giveaways. Or you can't wait until we, you know. Or run. you want all four. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew has kindly Most, given. A lot of people do get all four because it's, it's just like they can't decide which one they want, right? Yeah, you yeah, don't exactly. have to do them right away. Like you can let it sit yeah. for a bit and then you know do it in a few weeks or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you are if you'd like to buy a kit through uh, Nature Lion at naturelion.ca, we have a um, a discount code, Hi Ladies Twenty Five. We'll put this in yep. the notes. Uh, we'll make sure all of this is yeah. in the show notes. Um, thank you so much for making that happen. We're gonna have four really happy uh, listeners and everybody else. Twenty five percent off. That that ain't shabby. Right? That's not shabby. And they're all. not expensive. <laughs> they really are. When you look at the price of mushrooms at the supermarket. Oi. They, it's it's actually I think quite cost effective. For yeah, you get entertainment and fed. Right, it's like dinner mm-hmm. and a movie. Which one would you want to yeah. win? Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. And, uh, just to say, like it, it, about it about the price of it, because um, a lot of people ask me, well, how many mushrooms am I going to get from this? Right, so. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it varies depending on the environment and the conditions of in your home a little bit. But in general, you'll get about a half a pound to yep. a pound on the first flush. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Um, with the lion's mane, you can get a little bit more. Um, I've seen flushes up to a pound and a quarter on the first flush. Oh, wow. And they come back a second time and a nice. third time. So um, in terms of value for mushrooms, I was looking in at uh, the grocery store the other day because every time I'm there, I have to have a look at the <laughs> mushroom course. section. And uh, the oysters are going for $22 a pound there. Whoa. And they, you know, not to say anything bad, but they've been put in boxes in the fridge and then mm-hmm. they yeah. waited there and then they went on a truck and then they went over there and then they got on another truck and then they ended up at the grocery store yeah, where they may have been there for a few days as well before you pick them up. Mm-hmm. So they're not the freshest There's nothing like eating your that own food. There's no, that's yeah. right. There's like nothing like eating something you've grown with love and the kids yeah. are so easy. So thank you, Andrew, for your time. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate being able to share this with everybody because I think there's a lot of people who are going to go, oh, yeah, I never thought about that. Oh, yes. And I mean, definitely go and check out Andrew um, on Instagram at Nature Lion Mushroom. Yep. Not mushrooms, only one mushroom. And we'll put it in the show notes. And I'll put it in the show notes. Um, But you seem like you're pretty awesome. So, I mean, I know that I'm fairly confident that if I had a kit and I had a problem, I would just reach out to you on Instagram and be like, yeah, what did I, I do well, wrong? You well, can contact me by phone, text, email, like oh, you're super on accessible. the website. So, Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think now I can hear the kids running I upstairs. Know. So I think <laughs> it is time for us to step away. Take a toke. Eat a well, mushroom. Well, thanks for having me. And let's go be moms. And dads and, you know, <laughs> Yeah, all parents. those things. If you've enjoyed today's episode, you can find all of our episodes wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Of course, tell all your friends. Uh, Send us an email to enter the giveaway. Let us know what kind of mushroom you would like to grow out of the four kits that we mentioned. That's right. So send us an email at highladiespodcast at gmail.com. Check out our Instagram at highladiespodcast. Send us DMs and yeah, emails. And... We're easy to approach as well. So thank you again, Andrew. And this is us saying bye, bye ladies. Bye, ladies. <laughs> <laughs>